Once upon a time in Adventure Bay, the snow-covered town was bustling with excitement as the winter festival approached. The Paw Patrol team, consisting of Chase, Marshall, Rubble, Sky, Rocky, and Zuma, were gearing up for a day filled with fun and laughter. The pups gathered at the lookout, their headquarters, where Reader, their leader, announced the winter festival activities. There was going to be a snowman building contest, ice skating, and even a special appearance by Santa Paws. The pups couldn't wait to join in the festive spirit. As the festival kicked off, the pups were having a blast. Marshall was attempting to ice skate, and Rubble was working hard on his snowman. Sky and Zuma were enjoying a friendly snowball fight, while Rocky was busy creating a beautiful ice sculpture. Suddenly, a call came in on the Paw Patrol pup pad. Mayor Goodway was on the line, and she sounded worried. The festival's grand Christmas tree had toppled over due to a strong gust of wind, blocking the main path. The townsfolk were unable to reach Santa Paws, who was stuck on the other side. Without hesitation, Ryder called the pups to action. Paw Patrol, let's save the winter festival, he exclaimed. The pups rushed to their respective vehicles and set off on their snowy adventure. Chase, with his police truck, cleared the path, while Marshall used his fire truck to create a safe zone around the fallen tree. Rubble, with his bulldozer, worked tirelessly to lift the tree and make way for the townsfolk. Sky and Zuma assisted in guiding everyone safely through the cleared path. With teamwork and determination, the pups successfully rescued Santa Paws and restored the festival's cheer. Mayor Goodway expressed her gratitude, and the townsfolk applauded the Paw Patrol for their heroic efforts. As a token of appreciation, Santa Paws handed each pup a special gift. Chase received a shiny new police badge, Marshall got a firefighter's hat, Rubble got a golden shovel, Sky got a pair of dazzling wings, Rocky received an art kit, and Zuma got a new surfboard. The Paw Patrol pups were overjoyed with their gifts, but they realized that the true magic of the Winter Festival was bringing happiness to the town. With the festival now in full swing, the pups joined in the festivities, showcasing their talents in the snowman building contest, ice skating, and even participating in a friendly pup race. As the day came to a close, the Paw Patrol pups gathered around a roaring fire, sharing stories and laughter. The Winter Festival had not only been saved, but had become a day to remember for Adventure Bay. With the town illuminated by twinkling lights and the joyous laughter of its residents, the Paw Patrol pups looked at each other with a sense of accomplishment. They knew that no matter the challenge, as long as they worked together, they could overcome anything and make every adventure a paw someone. And so, under the starry winter sky, the Paw Patrol pups drifted off to sleep, dreaming of the next exciting adventure that awaited them in Adventure Bay. In the heart of Adventure Bay, a mysterious portal appeared near the lookout. The Paw Patrol pups, always ready for a new adventure, gathered around as the portal emitted a soft, magical glow. Before they knew it, the portal whisked them away to an enchanted forest far beyond their wildest imaginations. As the pups looked around, they noticed talking animals and glowing fireflies. The air was filled with the sweet scent of flowers, and the trees whispered ancient tales. It was a fairy tale world, and the Paw Patrol couldn't believe their eyes. Just as the pups were getting used to their magical surroundings, a tiny fairy named Sparkle fluttered down from a rainbow-colored tree. She explained that the enchanted forest was in trouble. The magical crystals that kept the forest alive were fading, and the once vibrant land was losing its magic. With their rescue mission instincts kicking in, the Paw Patrol agreed to help. Sparkle guided them through the mystical forest, introducing them to whimsical creatures along the way. Each pup was enchanted with a special gift by the fairy folk. Chase received a cloak of invisibility. Marshall gained the ability to control fire safely. Rubble's shovel could now move mountains with a magical touch. Sky's wings sparkled with the power of flight. Rocky's recycling truck could transform into any tool, and Zuma's hovercraft was now equipped with waterbending abilities. Their first task was to find the Crystal Grove, the source of the magical crystals. Along the way, they encountered challenges like talking trees and riddles from mischievous fairies. With teamwork and the newfound magical gifts, the Paw Patrol overcame each obstacle, bringing them closer to the Crystal Grove. Upon reaching the grove, they discovered the magical crystals were fading because the mischievous night shadows were draining their energy. The night shadows, dark creatures born from negative emotions, 
were spreading gloom throughout the enchanted forest. With bravery and determination, the Paw Patrol used their magical gifts to outsmart the night shadows. Chase's invisibility cloak allowed him to sneak up on them, while Marshall's controlled fire frightened them away. Rubble moved mountains to block their path, Sky and Rocky combined their powers to create dazzling distractions, and Zuma used water to cleanse the darkness. As the last night shadow disappeared, the crystal grove began to glow with renewed energy. The enchanted forest came back to life, vibrant and full of magic. The grateful fairy folk and animals celebrated with a grand feast, and Sparkle thanked the Paw Patrol for saving their home. With a twinkle in their eyes, the Paw Patrol bid farewell to the enchanted forest, knowing they could always return whenever Adventure Bay needed a touch of magic. As the portal transported them back home, the pups looked at each other with a sense of accomplishment. Another magical adventure added to their heroic tales. And so, under the starry night sky of Adventure Bay, the Paw Patrol fell asleep, dreaming of the next enchanting adventure that awaited them in their fairy tale world. Once upon a time in Adventure Bay, the PRW Patrol pups were on a routine mission when they received a mysterious distress call from a village that had long been forgotten. Intrigued by the unusual request, Ryder and the pups set out to discover what lay ahead. As they reached the village, they were surprised to find it was an ancient village, untouched by modern technology. The villagers welcomed them with open arms, grateful for the help. The village had been facing a series of peculiar problems, and the Paw Patrol was determined to lend a paw. Chase used his tracking skills to investigate the strange occurrences. Sky soared above, keeping an eye on the village from the sky, while Marshall and Rubble assisted the villagers with their daily tasks. Rocky, with his eco-friendly expertise, explored ways to improve the village's sustainability. As the days passed, the pups learned about the village's rich history and traditions. The villagers shared tales of their ancestors and the challenges they faced. There was a sense of harmony and simplicity in the old ways that intrigued the Paw Patrol. However, the village also faced a dilemma. A crucial bridge that connected them to the outside world was in desperate need of repair. Without it, they struggled to trade and communicate with neighboring Arias. The pups, with their problem-solving skills, decided to organize a community event to raise funds for the bridge. They collaborated with the villagers to host a traditional fair, showcasing the old crafts, music, and dances that had been a part of the village for generations. The fair drew attention from nearby towns, and soon enough, the villagers began selling their unique handmade goods. Visitors were enchanted by the old world charm and embraced the opportunity to support the village. With the funds raised, the Paw Patrol, along with the villagers, worked together to repair the bridge. As the bridge was rebuilt, the village found a balance between preserving its heritage and embracing positive change. The Paw Patrol bid farewell, leaving behind a village that had not only regained its connection to the world, but had also discovered the value of its old traditions in the process. The pups returned to Adventure Bay, reflecting on the remarkable adventure they had shared with the old village. It was a tale of bridging gaps, both in physical structures and between the past and the present, showing that sometimes, the perfect solution lies in a blend of the old and the new. And so, the Pawview Patrol continued to be ever ready for the next adventure that awaited them in Adventure Bay and beyond. One sunny day in Adventure Bay, Ryder and his trusty team of pups known as the Paw Patrol were enjoying some well-deserved downtime at the beach. The pups raced along the shore, played fetch with their favorite beach ball, and even built sand castles. But just as they were about to enjoy their picnic lunch, Ryder's pup pad rang with an urgent call. It was Mayor Goodway, and she needed their help. A group of baby sea turtles was trapped in a net that had washed ashore. Without hesitation, Ryder called his team into action. Chase, the police pup, raced to the scene in his police cruiser, while Skye, the high-flying pup, took to the skies in her helicopter. Marshall, the firefighting pup, brought his fire truck, and Rubble, the construction pup, rolled in with his bulldozer. Rocky, the recycling pup, and Zuma, the water rescue pup, joined the effort too. Working together, they quickly freed the baby sea turtles and safely released them back into the ocean. Mayor Goodway, who had been worried about the turtles, thanked the Paw Patrol for their heroic rescue. With the mission complete, the pups returned to their beach adventure. 
They played in the surf, built sandcastles, and even shared their picnic lunch with a friendly seagull. As the sun began to set, Ryder and his pups gathered around a bonfire they had built. They roasted marshmallows, shared stories, and looked up at the starry sky. It had been another possum day in Adventure Bay, filled with teamwork, friendship, and the joy of helping others. With their bellies full and their hearts happy, the Paw Patrol knew that no matter where their adventures took them, they could always count on each other to save the day and make the world a better place. And so, under the twinkling stars, they drifted off to sleep, ready for whatever new adventures awaited them in the morning. Once upon a time, in the cozy bedroom of a little boy named Andy, toys came to life when humans weren't around. Woody, the cowboy doll, was the leader of Andy's toys, and he cared deeply for each and every one of them. One sunny morning, Andy's family announced they were going on a family vacation. This meant the toys would be left behind. While the other toys were sad, Woody reminded them of the important rule. No toy left behind. As long as they had each other, everything would be all right. But an unexpected twist awaited them. Andy's neighbor, Sid, who was known for being a little bit of a troublemaker, acquired a new toy, a shiny and squeaky space action figure named Buzz Lightyear. Woody's position as Andy's favorite toy was threatened. Buzz, however, had no idea he was a toy believing he was a real space ranger on a mission. Conflict erupted in the world of Andy's toys. Woody was determined to return Buzz to Andy's room before they left for their new home. In a wild chase, they ended up in the neighbor's backyard. In the backyard, Woody and Buzz discovered Sid's terrifying secret. He liked to take apart toys and put them back together in strange and scary ways. The toys Sid had already tortured filled them in on his methods. Woody and Buzz knew they had to escape, and they came up with a daring plan. Their plan involved using Sid's love of fireworks to create a distraction. While Sid was setting up a rocket, the toys came to life and terrified him. In the chaos, Buzz and Woody climbed onto the rocket. Just in the nick of time, they were launched into the sky. As they soared high above, Buzz saw the beauty of Earth from space. It was then that he realized he was just a toy and not a real space ranger. It was a moment of self-discovery and growth. Back home, Andy was about to leave for the new house when he couldn't find Woody and Buzz. In a heartwarming moment, Woody and Buzz landed in Andy's car just as they were about to leave. The toys were reunited, and Buzz had become an integral part of the group. The toys learned an important lesson. It didn't matter who Andy's favorite was. What truly mattered was the bond they all shared and the adventures they had together. With Buzz's arrival, they became a more diverse and stronger family. And so, Andy's toys continued to have many more adventures and play together every day when Andy was around. They lived by a simple yet powerful motto, friends stick together no matter what. And they knew that they were loved, not because of what they were, but because they were Andy's toys. With those happy thoughts, Woody, Buzz, and all the toys nestled into their positions and waited for the next exciting day, for they knew there were many more adventures waiting just around the corner. And with that, Andy's room was filled with the soft sounds of a contented and loving family, both human and toy, falling into a peaceful night's sleep. The End Good night, little ones. In the bustling town of Bedrock, there lived a family of cavemen known as the Flintstones. The Flintstones were a fun-loving and close-knit family who enjoyed their prehistoric life. At the center of this family was Fred Flintstone, the head of the household. One sunny morning, Fred decided to take his family on a thrilling adventure. He gathered his wife, Wilma, and their daughter, Pebbles, and shouted, Yabba Dabba Doo! We're going on a dynamite adventure today! The family hopped into their trusty, foot-powered car, and with a Yabba Dabba Doo, they were off on a journey. Their first stop was to pick up their closest friends and neighbors, Barney and Betty Rubble, along with their son, Bam Bam. As the Flintstones and Rubbles cruised through bedrock in their foot-powered car, they marveled at the towering stone buildings and the quirky creatures of their time. Along the way, they passed their favorite diner, the Bronto Burger, and made a pit stop for some prehistoric fast food. Their adventure took them to the heart of the beautiful and lush Rocky Ravine. Here they saw amazing geological formations made of brightly colored rocks, and the kids played near a bubbling tar pit just like their ancestors. After a fun-filled morning, the Flintstones and Rubbles decided to visit the Bedrock Quarry, where Fred and Barney worked at the Slate Rock and Gravel Company. 
The kids watched in awe as their fathers operated the heavy machinery and shared stories about their jobs. Wilma and Betty exchanged stories and laughter, showcasing the strong bond of friendship between the families. Feeling inspired, Fred suggested a friendly competition. They all decided to have a stone-throwing contest. Each member of the family took turns heaving their stones as far as they could. Laughter and cheers filled the air as they competed. Pebbles and Bam Bam, the youngest members of the group, were filled with excitement. They tried their best, and to everyone's surprise, the young ones tossed their stones the farthest. It was a moment of pride for the kids, and they celebrated their victory with triumphant shouts. As the day continued, the families embarked on a journey to a nearby volcano, which was known for its amazing hot springs. They eagerly dipped their feet into the warm, soothing waters and watched it as the steam rose into the air. It was a moment of relaxation and serenity. The families decided to have a picnic near the volcano. Betty had prepared a delicious meal, which they enjoyed while surrounded by the breathtaking scenery. The sun began to set, casting a warm orange glow over the land. Just as they thought the day couldn't get any better, they noticed an unusual sight, a nest of pterodactyl eggs precariously perched on a cliff. The eggs were about to fall, endangering the nest and the baby pterodactyls inside. Without hesitation, the families sprang into action. Fred and Barney used their strength to create a makeshift bridge with logs and vines to reach the eggs safely. Wilma and Betty carefully transferred the eggs to a safer location, ensuring that the baby pterodactyls would be safe and sound. The families looked at each other, proud of their teamwork and resourcefulness. They knew that adventures in Bedrock were always full of surprises, but the best moments were the ones they spent together, helping each other and making new memories. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the families headed back home, their hearts full of joy and gratitude for their wonderful adventure. They returned to Bedrock, cherishing the bond of friendship that was as old as the town itself. Back in their cozy stone houses, the Flintstones and Rubbles knew that more adventures awaited them in the prehistoric world of Bedrock. They couldn't wait for their next Dinomite adventure, for they were a family who knew that, with love and friendship, every day was an opportunity for fun and discovery. And so, in the timeless town of Bedrock, the Flintstones and Rubbles continued to share their laughter, love, and sense of adventure reminding everyone that the true treasures of life were the moments spent with family and friends.